Margaret, for that. Interview. Oh, sorry. That should be the last <laughs> of it. Oh, no, you're good. Um, yeah, thank you, Margaret, for that introduction. Um, and thank you, Our Ladies Baltimore, for inviting me. Um, I'm very excited um, to be here today. And um, now maybe more nervous than when I started seeing how international the audience is. This is awesome. Um, and when I used to live in Richmond, Virginia. So hello um, to the person living in Richmond. Um, and man, what a lineup this, uh, this year. So thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of quite an impressive group of people. And so I will um, hopefully do some service today to building websites. Uh, let's see here. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Do the, the slides, perfect. Okay, I don't use Keynote a lot because I usually make websites in, or make slides in R, um, but I'm using Keynote. So, um, and thank you also for managing the chat. Um, as Margaret mentioned, a lot of my uh, research work is focused on statistics education, and that's because I teach um, large introductory courses. And so this last year, it's been interesting trying to manage Zoom chat and reactions and slides and R, and it's been, it's been a fun adventure. Um, but today I'm going to talk about building websites in our studio. Um, and just to, uh oh, oh, I clicked my link. There we go. Um, so just to give you a rundown of my presentation, um, first I'm just gonna motivate like why we might wanna build websites in our studio as opposed to maybe a more traditional platform or maybe using a more traditional format like HTML. Um, then I'll briefly introduce sort of two of the main packages that are used to build websites, so distill and blog down. Um, then we'll actually go through the process of making the website that's linked in the starter doc. So we'll see sort of how that website was made. And then I'll finish up with a few like tips and some lessons learned uh, from doing this. And so what I really hope is that by the end, you know, you're excited about building websites in R um, if you've never done it before and also have at least enough to get started. Um, obviously in 45 minutes, it's hard to cover everything, but at least enough to um, get you on your way. Um, and also so you can see that it's re like R makes it extremely accessible to make really cool websites fairly quickly. Uh, but let's start with the motivation. Um, so just to give you some idea of my background in making websites. Um, so in high school and college, I made some fairly simple websites using HTML. Um, and I think like my freshman year of college, we had an assignment where we had to make a website about something we enjoyed. And so I actually made a website all about I Love Lucy, which uh, is my favorite television show. Um, and I tried to find that website and I think the link is down because it's been that, it's just been too long since I've been in college. But um, yeah, that's just like playing around with simple uh, sort of HTML coding. And I did take one web programming class uh, in college where we did like HTML and CSS and PHP and Perl. Um, but that was almost uh, 10 years ago. And so there was a huge gap where I learned a little bit um, sort of like intro to web design or building websites. And then I really didn't build another website um, for, like I said, almost 10 years. So just to give you some idea of my uh, background is specific to websites. Um, but I think the background that's most relevant to this is that I regularly use R and R Markdown. And so I think before building websites, having some fam familiarity with just like R and R Studio and R Markdown is very useful. Um, I'll also say too, just like a really basic working knowledge of Git, uh, GitHub, and you'll see in the presentation today how we incorporate GitHub in this. Um, I also just enjoy playing around with websites and trying out new things. Um, and then also I'm very good at Google searches. And so most of the time I spend uh, making websites is actually Googling how to do things that I want to do. And I'll actually show you an example of where this came up as I was preparing the website for this talk and give you an idea of what that looks like in practice. So then just to give you an idea of how I got started making websites in R, so I joined the faculty at Duke in 2018 and I wanted a website for my course. And so this is the website for my regression analysis course in, 28, in fall 2018. And so this is where, and this is kind of like the central hub for my course. So where the students see the schedule and the syllabus and I link all my slides to the websites, um, etc. And so um, on the bottom left hand side, you can see the course schedule and in the yellow box on the right hand side, you can see the HTML code 
to make uh, basically one row of that table. So this is all the code that's required to get the information for Tuesday, uh, September 11th. Um, and so this whole website was built using HTML. And so um, sort of some things that I didn't particularly like about this website is just like the code's really difficult to read. So like you can imagine all this code is required for one row on the table. So just imagine looking at the code for this entire table. Um, it's really easy to make mistakes, right? I need to put like the um, spaces in here for the empty cells. I need to make sure I have the right number of um, cells for each row. Like it's just really easy to make a make a mistake. Um, this also just takes a while to update just because you have to dig through all the code. And from a teaching perspective, I update my website at least two to three, four times a week. So I need, so this is something I'm doing regularly. And so I need something that's fairly quick because I spend a lot of my time, you know, adding new materials and things. Um, and then the last thing is that I was limited by my HTML knowledge and the time that I had to uh, put into this. So this website was only going to look as good as I knew how to do HTML code or as much time as I was willing to put into it. And so I got inspired by a colleague, um, Mina Chetankaya Rendell, um, who's um, also at our studio as well. Um, and she just has really cool websites for her class. And I was like, I need to know how to do this. Like, what did you do? Um, and so um, I, I learned what she did um, and she helped me figure out how she built her website. And so this is what my website looked like the following semester. Um, so like, I love the design. I have this like kind of fun picture that I spent probably too much time making for the background. I still have the course schedule and all the information that I had on my previous page. And so now this is what a week on the course schedule looks like. And so from um, the user interface, this is what I'm updating. Um, it's really intuitive. I understand title, date, slides, Apex is application exercises for our class. Um, and obviously there's a lot of more complex code in the background that's turning this yellow box into what you see on the bottom left. Um, but from a user perspective, um, this is the code is really easy and intuitive. It's really quick for me to update because the code's really streamlined. Um, I'm no longer limited by my HTML knowledge uh, because there's some backend that makes this website design. And so um, this got me really excited about building websites in R. And um, since then, all my course websites have been built in R and R Studio um, and my personal site as well. Um, so then sort of building off that example, another thing that's really nice about building websites in our studio is that you can, you know, sort of use almost like official templates. And we'll see an example of using an official template later on, but also too, um, the R community is very open, uh, very open source. So usually you can find the code, like a lot of people's GitHub repos are public, uh, the repo for this, uh, the website that I made for this talk is public. So you could take that repo and you have a starting point. Um, and so, you know, you can use official templates or use work that other people have done. And it's a nice springboard then to get the website that you want. And so here's that website I just showed you, which was designed based on Nina's website, which was originally designed by another instructor's website. And so each time we had a nice platform to start with, and then each person can kind of iterate and customize and add their own flair. Um, the other thing I like, so that is an example, or what I just showed is an example of sort of taking like one website that inspired me um, and then building from that. Um, but the other thing I really like is that once you really start doing this, and again, I just really like playing around with this stuff, you can you start to take elements from multiple websites. And so um, here's my website from fall 2020, where I taught an intro to data science class online. And just given the nature of the online classes where now there's videos to keep up with and Zoom links and sort of different information that's required for the student, I decided to change the design of my website. And so the design of the website is mostly based on the Tidy Models website, which is, I just absolutely love this website. I just think it's like the cleanest, nicest design. I love the font, I love the color, I love everything about this website. Um, so that was really my starting point, but then there were elements from uh, Mina's intro to data science website, um, and then Andrew Heiss's data biz website that I really liked as well. So I was able to kind of combine 
multiple things to create something for my class. And so just to give you an idea of what this looked like, um, so here's a page from the Tidy Models website. And I really like this menu on the side. Um, again, I just think it looks so nice and clean. Um, and I really like the structure of this page where there's kind of a nice table of contents on top. And then you have the different sections dividing up the information. So I really like the basic structure of this page. And then from the Intro to Data Science website, I really like the table so that you can link to your slides and your you know, videos for class, um, all that type of information. You have your assignments down here. And so what I did is took the basic structure of the Tidy Models page and then this idea of the table format from Mina's Intro to Data Science page. And this is how I designed the sort of week schedule page for my course, where again, the basic structure is from the Tidy Model site, but then I have the tables where we have the lecture materials, the readings. Uh, if you keep going, there's the assignments, et cetera. Um, so again, the really nice thing about building these websites in our studio is that it made it fairly simple. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this took me a little bit of time, uh, but you know, it makes it relatively easy given that I'm not a professional web designer or web programmer to take what I liked and then build something that worked for my purposes. Okay, so hopefully I've convinced you that uh, building websites in our studio is awesome. Um, so then now I'll just give you a brief rundown of two of the main packages. So distill and blog down. Um, so if you're looking up anything about building websites in our studio, these are the two packages that you want to focus on. And so I'll start out with distill. Um, distill was originally designed uh, to make websites for scientific communication. So a lot of it's uh, sort of really nice features. It supports our markdown. It's made to support LaTeX really nice citations of footnotes. So you can think about like uh, sort of its primary purpose was that if you have some sort of scientific uh, pub, uh, communication you wanted to do or some analysis you wanted to share, this still makes that really simple and easy for you to do. Um, it's also a great structure for blogs. So when I was looking through distill websites, I've noticed a lot of people have used it for blogs. Um, again, it has a really nice structure, um, which seems like a natural fit for blogs. So then as far as like the pros and the cons, uh, Distill makes it really easy to make a nice website pretty quickly. And in fact, the example we'll use today is going to be through Distill. Um, and it has a fairly straightforward and streamlined file structure that makes it easy to update. So um, it's if you want something really quick, you're like, I've got an hour to get this website done. Distill is a great place to go and you'll have something that looks really nice and professional really quickly. Um, some like sort of like a con to or maybe a disadvantage to distill is that it is very structured so a lot of distill sites do look fairly similar because it is um, again due to that structure, uh, but there are some new templates um, and more and more being uh, implemented every day that you can do you can use to customize a distill site and so we'll use uh, what's known as the postcards template today. And so again i'll kind of stop there with distill because we'll um, hit that a lot in the next section. Um, so then the next one is Blogdown, um, and Blogdown is designed for building websites using Hugo, which is a website generator. Um, and so if you go to the Hugo website, which you can link from the slides, you'll see that there's over 100 different Hugo uh, templates. And so the nice thing about Hugo is that you have access to a ton of different website designs, um, but you're still able through the Blogdown package, you're able to utilize our markdown and your our functions that you're, you know, the same type of coding that you're used to, um, but still have access to all these really, really nice designs. And so in fact, all of the websites I showed in the beginning of the talk, those were all built using Blogdown. So really customizable. Um, so one that you may have seen um, is the Hugo academic theme. I feel like this is the most popular website template of all time. Um, I feel like one out of five personal pages is probably made using this theme. Uh, but it's such a great theme because it's just really clean. Uh, you get all your information on there. It just looks really nice for like a professional website, which I think is why so, so many people have gravitated towards it. Um, and it's fairly easy to use actually for Hugo website. Um, I've also seen it now used for uh, course websites as well. The intro data science, I think, was built largely using academic. So then just to give you an idea of what this looks like um, in practice, so you'll need the blog down package. And then once you install blog down, you'll install Hugo. 
um, which again is accessing that the Hugo website generator. And then you'll in the console run this code where you basically say new site, um, and then you can set the theme. And so if you don't set a theme like the one I have here, the Hugo Lithium, this is the default. So if you set nothing, this is the one you would get. Um, but you could, you know, set to do the academic theme or whichever one of the over 100 themes that you want to do. And so once you do that, you'll notice your RStudio um, project populate with all these files. And so most uh, blog down sites have this um, sort of like a content file where you have like the basic pages of the website. Um, and sort of just all these different pieces. I won't go through this in detail because uh, we could go down a rabbit hole very quickly on blog down. Uh, but this is basically from running this one line of code, this is what you would see populate in your file pane. Um, and then this is what you would interface with to actually make your website. So um, in the content folder, there's the different uh, markdown files for like your about page or your home page or you know the different pages. Um, but you can see here that we're using markdown syntax. So you can tell from the like the links um, and then like the asterisks to make the bold text. And so you're customizing your website using just standard markdown syntax. Um, if you make these our markdown files, you could also add R code um, as well. And so just from this little bit right here, um, you build the website and you get something that looks really nice again really quickly. Um, so this is just the rendered site uh, from this about page uh, that we see. And again, this is what you get just when you run that one line of code. Um, I haven't updated anything on this page. Um, and so then from here, you would go through and update the page. So then just to give you some ideas of, again, the pros and cons, I, like I said, I won't go too deep into blog down because we could be here um, all day, maybe even until the ice cream social because there's so much for blog down. But um, the pros, again, is that there's a ton of different templates to choose from. So if you want a really customized website and you've honestly got some time to do it, um, then blog down is, is a great tool to use. Um, and then the cons are just that it sometimes it takes a little bit to figure out the structure. So what I showed you was the structure that typically shows up in blog down sites. Um, but I have noticed with other templates, sometimes the structure is a little different. So sometimes it just takes a minute to figure out uh, what's going on. Um, and then one thing to note also is that blog down again is connecting you to Hugo, um, which is a website generator, which is completely separate from our studio. And so sometimes Hugo can update um, and if you, if you accidentally install and update, sometimes you may notice that things will break. So I have had websites that I built, everything was fine. At some point, my Hugo updated. And then six months later, I try to run the website and nothing works. And I'm like, what is happening? Um, there are ways around this. You can actually, um, one of my tips will actually be to document which Hugo version you're using. Um, but you can also sort of set that. So during a semester, I keep like whatever, I keep like an old version of Hugo on my computer so that I don't break my class website. Um, but just some things to keep in mind. Okay, so then um, again, that was just like a really brief introduction of the two basic packages, but now let's go through the process of actually making a website. And so the website we're gonna make is the one that's linked in your um, notes. And so you go to the home page. And so this is what the home page looks like um, up here. And then I, at the top, I have a page uh, where I've started to just collect some websites. And then I have a page for an example article where you can see you can put all of you just like our markdown file. So you can run analyses, make visualizations. And again, that link at the top is gonna take you back to the home page. So this is the website we're gonna make. So the first thing we wanna do is start with a GitHub repo. So I'm going to host the website out of GitHub. So you may have noticed that the web address was like github.io. And so the first thing we're gonna do is make a GitHub repo. One thing to keep in mind when you make your repo is that the name of the repo will become part of the URL. So you wanna think about choosing um, a name for your repo that you, know, you want to be part of the URL. And then as usual, we'll um, clone the repo and we'll start a new RStudio project. 
Um, and really between this and then pushing your work back to GitHub, that's really what I mean by having working knowledge of GitHub. So having like a GitHub account and you know how to push work to GitHub. Um, so that's like the extent of the GitHub you need to use uh, besides a couple of point and click things at the end. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna build, I built this website using Distill. And so here's just, I'm loading the Distill library and I'm using the create package. And so here I'm just saying, put it in my current directory for my RStudio project. I've named my website. And then we're gonna host this through GH pages. And so I'm just saying GH pages equals true to configure it for GH pages. And so you can see this is what the basic file structure looks like. So from just running that piece of code, I have um, a docs folder that will show up. We'll see what that is in a minute. I have a site.yml that's gonna be the configuration file for the site. And then they already give me two pages to start with, um, an index page, uh, which is my home page for the website. And then they give you like an about page. So again, I already have something just from running this one line of code. Maria, there's a quick question about oh, what is GH pages? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I guess like the Cliff Notes version is GH pages is like GitHub's um, somehow, however, GitHub takes things from inside of your repo and makes it into a website. Um, so to give you an idea, I think if I can, I'm just going to go to my Repair real quick. So basically what GH pages is going to do um, is it's going to go inside this docs folder at the very end and it's going to take all this content from the docs folder and basically host it online and host it to turn into this web page. Um, so hopefully that answers okay, that question a little bit. Um, I'm sure there's way more detail to that, but yes, for our purposes, that's what it is. Um, great. Yeah. Any other questions actually before? I um, someone asked where where will you write the code in an R Markdown page in RStudio? And you think you're about to get to that actually probably in a second, so. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's a really good question. So um, throughout the talk, if it's in like one of the yellow boxes, um, that's something you could just run in your console. Um, so like that, so actually I'll just switch back to my slides here. Yeah, so like this library distill and then the create website that you can just run in your console because that's not code that you know you need to keep long term you're just using that to generate things. Um, and then what you'll see in the boxes so like down here, those are going to be uh, RMD files. Great thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, but so then here's our index file and so with distill the index .rmd file or the index file, this is always going to be the home page. And so this will come up later at the end uh, when you see when we need to kind of switch that around a little bit. Um, so the index RMD, this will be our home page. And then our index file will also always have this site key. Um, and I keep losing my uh, mouse, so I can't put a star or anything. But you can see in the um, RMD file on the left-hand side, there's that site distill colon colon distill underscore website. Um, that line should always be in the uh, index page. And again, we'll kind of come back to that idea at the very end when I choose what I want my index page to be. Okay, and then this site underscore YML, this is the website configuration file. And so basically what this is doing is sort of putting together all the different pieces of the website so that you can create a cohesive website that you see on the web. And so we have the name of our website, we have the title of the website that shows up in that navigation bar, a brief description. Um, we have um, our output directory, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then we also have a navigation bar, which I'll talk about in a minute as well. Um, and then this output, um, again, that's just the default. I haven't really changed anything here. That's saying the output, um, like our RMD files and this distill article format. Um, and so we'll see this a little later on, but you may have noticed that even my RMD file had some like nice heading at the top with like my name and institution and things. And so those are distill articles. So then this output directory, um, output underscore DIR, um, this is the folder where all the site contents are gonna go. So every time I click to build my website, all those HTML files are gonna go into a folder called docs. Um, I, this is the default, I didn't change this, but you could change it if you wanted to use a different uh, folder name. 
But this is actually what GitHub's going to use to uh, post the site online. And then the navigation bar. And so this was the bar that you see on the top of the website. And so the text is gonna tell you like what the text actually looks like on the navigation bar. And then the HREF is gonna tell you the link to whichever page it should go to. And so as the website is in the default, when you first make it, you have something called home um, that'll go to like the index page and then something called about that will go to the about page. Um, I did note here that these, are, you can write them as relative links which basically means start at the home page and then go to um, about.html. So then one other thing to note is that when you build a new distill site, this happens with blog down as well, you'll notice in um, your RStudio pane, and you may need to close our studio and open it back up. But in the pane that has like your environment and your history, um, your maybe like your Git pane too, I think is in this one. Um, I think it's typically on the top right hand side. Um, I've rearranged my pane so much, I forget what the default is. Um, but you'll get this new build tab, and there's a button called build website. And so when we want to see what the website looks like, we can click this button and it'll build the website and we can see what will, you know, what others would see on the web. Um, for our purposes, because our website's pretty small, um, it's fine just to keep rebuilding the entire website. There are ways where you could preview particular pages. So if you have a really big website, you probably don't want to rebuild the whole thing every time. Uh, but if you have something fairly simple, um, I think just clicking the build website is kind of the quickest and easiest thing to do. Uh, but there are other alternatives. And so as you're building a website, um, and we'll kind of see this iterative process, I recommend building the website fairly often, or at least building the rebuilding the pages that you're working on fairly often, so that one, you can see your changes, and two, if things don't work, you've only made small changes and it helps debugging a lot more if you know, okay, I changed this one line of code, you know, what's going on. So we'll kind of do this often. Maria, there was one question on the previous slide, actually, um, in the YAML um, header about, can you add more tabs than just the home and about, for example? Oh, sure. Yeah, good question. Yes, you can. So, um, and actually later on, we're going to actually change these tabs. But yeah, you can. So like, I think um, I have a distill site we made for school. And I think we have like six or seven things on there. Um, so you would just keep that same, you know, dash text and then href format and add as many as you'd like. Um, I guess the only thing to keep in mind is that as you add too many, um, then like the bar gets, you know, kind of busy. Um, but yeah, you can add as many as you'd like. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay, so we're gonna build our website often. Okay, so on that rule, we're gonna build the website. So this is what the website looks like. So I just ran the distill code. I haven't changed anything, but you can see I already have something that looks really nice and I did very little work. I think I ran two lines of R code and changed the title. And I already have something that looks really good. So now let's customize things. So this is the home page that I want. And so obviously this is not the same thing. Um, so I wanna make this home page. And so there is a new package, fairly new, um, called Postcards. And what Postcards does is it's basically a template package for Distill. And so there's a few different uh, postcard designs. Um, so we're just going to use one today, but there's a few different ones. Um, and so all we need to do is we're going to make use of the Postcard package to give us the basic structure. And then we're going to do all the fun stuff and customize the colors and the font. And that's really the part that I like. Um, so we're going to utilize that package. Um, and I think now too, a lot, I've started to see more websites. Um, like I think Jeff Leak, his personal page now is uh, using this template actually. And so the whole idea of postcards is to create simple, beautiful, personal websites and landing pages using only our markdown. Um, so it's fantastic. So in order to do that, we're gonna actually do create article. So if we wanna add a page to a distill site, uh, we use the create article function. Um, I'm gonna call it home just so that I can remember that it's going to be the home page at some point, but you can call this whatever you'd like. Um, I'm gonna say use the trestles template. So that's the basic structure that I want. And I wanna use it from the postcards package. And so this is telling me to make that basic structure. And so when I do that, um, notice on the file structure on the, on the left-hand side, 
a new RMD file pops up called home.rmd. So from running that line of code, um, I have my new home.rmd file. And also two in my site.yaml. Um, so every time I um, up, add a new page, I wanna immediately go to that configuration page and add it to my website. So I'm gonna tell my website now to, when you click home, I want you to go to my new page that I've created. And eventually I'm gonna make this the home page. So again, I have this nice new RMD file, and then I'm also going to make sure to update my underscore site file um, so that my navigation bar stays up to date with my web pages. And so home.rmd, um, and it's kind of small, uh, but you can see here that basically what I get is an RMD file. Um, so at the top from the postcards uh, template, um, in the YAML here, or sort of like in the metadata at the top, I have the title, There's you can add an image, uh, we have some links that are going to activate these buttons, um, and then we just tell it uh, to, you know, output a postcard, go to the postcards package, and create a website using the Trestles template. And again, so far I haven't updated anything, so this is uh, what the template produces. And then noticing underneath um, Underneath bio, this is where I'll just use my markdown uh, syntax or our markdown uh, to update the website. And so this is what you get. Um, right now, the image is broken because I don't have frank.jpg in my folder, but we're going to add our own image. But you can see already we've got the basic structure. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to make some quick updates. So I'm going to, instead of having Frank's image, I'm going to use my own image called website logo. So that's going to get those nice website logo on my page. Um, I like to put my images in a separate folder. So notice in the file structure, I've added a folder called IMG. And in there, I'm going to store any images for the website. This just helps like if you're making something with a lot of different images or something just helps organize your work a little bit. Um, and then I changed the name of the button. So I want a button called slides where we'll access the PDF file. Um, Twitter, I wanted to go to my Twitter, not Frank's Twitter, um, you know, GitHub, and then email. So I've just made some basic updates um, to the top. And then now I've also updated the body. And so to update the body, again, you're using basic markdown syntax. Notice you can use inline R code. Um, where I've used it is in the headers to add the emojis. Um, so if you look next to welcome, um, I have some inline R code to add a little emoji. You could use, you know, inline R code to do something maybe more useful than emojis. Um, but again, making just use of basic markdown syntax, R code, uh, the stuff that, um, you know, I would use just in a regular project for R. So now I've updated everything. So um, now we have home.html and now it has, you know, my logo that instead of like the broken Frank picture, it has the title. Um, we have the buttons to say what I want them to say. And if we click them, they would go to the different pages. And then we also have our information on the right hand side. So we're already getting closer. Um, so now let's customize it. So I have my basic information, but you may notice that the colors are different, um, the fonts a little different. So now let's customize this web page. Sorry, Maria, can I interrupt with just one question? Oh, sure. Yeah, go um, this was about the image in the YAML. Mm -hmm. um, if you have multiple images, do you just refer to the folder once or each image gets a line in the YAML? Yeah, you know, so I have not played around with this enough to know if you could put more than one image. So. And I'm actually not sure if that would be possible because the so that that image line in the YAML is specific. Oh, I wish I had a pointer, um, but it's specific to that image that's popping up on the left hand side over the title. And so I think due to the template itself, you wouldn't be able to put multiple images in there. Um, but like, let's say I wanted to, um, you know, put some images on the right hand side amongst my text. I would need to reference the image folder um, to say, hey, go inside the image folder and then find, you know, my image.jpg. All right. And then there's one more question. Does the home.html replace the index.html? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. So um, it does in the sense that now when I click the home button, it's going to go to home.html and we'll see like a little video um, later on. So when I click the button in the nav bar, 
it's going to go to my new templated page, um, but it doesn't replace the home page yet. So when you go to the website, um, I haven't quite replaced it yet. Okay, great. Thank you for both of those. Yeah, yeah, these are great. Okay, so now let's customize it. Um, so this is the part that I really enjoy. And to be honest, this is where I spend most of my time <laughs> is customizing things. So um, there's a few different ways to, or a couple of different ways. So you could apply individual CSS pages to, or CSS files to each individual page. Um, but the nice thing about distill is you can use this create theme function and I'm just gonna call it my theme. Um, you could call it something a little more creative. Um, but the nice thing about creating a theme is it's going to be the default formatting for any new page I add. So particularly if you're doing something like a blog where you, you know, you're going to be updating it weekly or something, you don't want to have to remember to copy and paste the CSS file every time. So by just applying a theme to your entire website, now there's some basic formatting to any page on my website. Okay. So then what happens? So when I run this line of code, again, I'm going to run the create underscore theme code in my console because I don't need to keep that code. Um, in my file pane now, I'm going to have a new file called mytheme.css. And that's going to be a CSS file where I can add all of my custom options. And then I need to remember in my site.yml, so remember, kind of anytime we add something new to the site, we need to add it to site.yml because that's the configuration. And so I can add the theme uh, line here, and I'm going to say, hey, I want the theme to be whatever's inside of my theme.css. So this is going to tell R to apply whatever colors and font I choose to the entire website. So then let's take a look at my theme.css. So the nice thing is, um, again, which is why I love building websites in our studio and utilizing these packages, is that you get this really nicely formatted CSS file that's really intuitive. Um, and you can tell sort of like what you're updating. So like title color feels really intuitive, the body colors, like the body of the text, the title size. Um, so again, I don't really need to know a lot of CSS syntax in order to up, like start changing things. Um, you can add customized CSS at the bottom, and we'll see an example of that, but I can do some really cool stuff uh, just with the template that's provided. So one thing I like to do when um, I make web, web pages, I usually get my fonts from Google Fonts. Um, so if you click, I won't click, oh, there's my mouse, um, but Google, font, Google has a ton of different fonts, um, and so I spend a lot of time just digging through Google fonts, trying to find the perfect font. So if you find a font you want to use, you can run this import tag. And this is copy and pasted directly from Google fonts website. So I didn't need to come up with this code. And so you can just put this at the top to import the font. And then at the bottom, you can apply the custom font. So here I'm like importing on line 16, the salsa font. And then on line 35, I'm saying, make all of my headings the salsa font. Um, so it's a really nice way to get some cool fonts. Um, and again, most of the time it's just spent digging through the Google fonts page and finding like the perfect one. Um, you can also customize your colors and your font sizes. So again, here are the font sizes, here are some font colors. Um, and so um, just some websites I typically use, a Pantone color picker is a great place to find colors. Um, and this, um, coolers.co and it actually has like two o's um dot co they have like a nice uh like a random color uh palette generator so if you're just like really scrapped for ideas you can just hit the space bar and come up with all sorts of ideas um so you can spend a ton of time here but this is basically where i'm going to update all the colors and the font so by just you know filling out those colors and those new fonts now we see something that looks a little closer to um, you know, what we see on the final page. And so we're getting there. I have the colors that I want. My links are a cool color. Um, customizing the links is something I needed to write in the, um, just in, my, in the CSS code lower down. Um, and I have the headers, the color I want, the nav bars, the color I want. So I'm getting really close. So I'm close, but I wanted the buttons to be a different color. So you may notice that on my page, the buttons were like this kind of light purple color. Um, and so this is an example of where maybe sometimes you have to do a little digging. So I wanted to know, how do I customize these buttons? Because unfortunately, buttons was not one of the options on the nice CSS template. So again, I mentioned that I, one, have done a little bit of website design, and two, I've just 
kind of built these enough and you start to pick up patterns and things that have worked in the past. And so what I did was I went inside that docs folder and remember docs is where all the generated HTML files go. And so I looked at the home.html file and I went and found the part of the code that has the button. And so I saw this line and I just from doing this a lot of times and picking up patterns, noticed, well, typically if you can apply formatting to a class and then that'll, so if I just apply the formatting to the class, then I can make the buttons whatever color I want. So that's what I decided to do. I was like, I can customize the .btn class. So I go to my myThing.css. Um, this is the syntax, the dot button. This is the syntax for formatting a class. I've done this a ton of times. I set the little background color. So I want the background to be purple. I want the text to be white and it didn't work. And I was very confused. Why doesn't this work? Because I'd done this a million times. Why doesn't this work? So then this is when I had to do some digging. And remember I said, I'm really good at Google. Um, so I did a, you know, a Google search and I figured out, you may notice the difference is I needed to add this important tag. And I won't go into too many of the details, but basically in the template, the postcards package template, the buttons are customized and there's a lot of customization um, using Bootstrap CSS, which is basically, um, I guess like Bootstrap would be like a framework for CSS coding. Um, and long story short, the way Bootstrap works is if something's coded in Bootstrap, that's gonna override anything else um, unless you tell it, no, 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 I want you to do my thing, not Bootstrap's thing. And so what was happening is in the code that always works, the bootstrap formatting was still taking precedent. And again, I found this from Googling and someone on Stack Overflow, I think, had the same problem at some point. And this is how I came up with this. And so, right, thanks internet. Um, so I figured out if I add this important tag and I read a little bit about this bootstrap CSS framework, um, now I got my purple buttons. Um, and again, that was like a little, you know, 20, 30 minute detour, um, but I really wanted these buttons to be purple. So um, I spent the time. Um, but the point is that sometimes, particularly with using the templates, you know, every once in a while, there's something where you got to kind of dig a little bit into the, you know, you got to dig in the weeds a little bit, get in the HTML code, and maybe take a little bit of time to Google it and figure it out. Um, you know, or you could decide, hey, these buttons are fine if they're not purple, right? But, um, but just an example that, you know, sometimes it does take a little bit of extra. Okay, so I got my page, I got my purple buttons. Um, so now we're super close. Um, let me show you quickly how I can add a new page. So remember that markdown page that had like the graph and the R analysis. So I'm just creating a, the create article. Um, I'm not adding any extra arguments, so it's just going to create the standard distill article. And so I created this article called example markdown, R markdown, and that was just my page that had just some, you know, graphs and some R code. And you can see here that this looks like a R markdown file, so really similar. Um, the only difference is it's very small, but it does say output equals distill article. And that's so that it has that nice sort of like header at the top with my name and institution and things. So it just gives it a nice structure. So um, this is the example R markdown. Um, so it's gonna render to this page. Um, and again, this is the page that's on the website. Uh, notice that it's got the formatting because I am applying a theme that applied to the whole website. And as always, right, I got to remember to update my underscore site file. Um, so I'm going to add example article and then the link to it to uh, my site configuration file. And so now I've got that new page um, in my bar. Okay, so then there's one more thing. So here's the page right now. So notice when you go to the web page, it's going to go to this site or this page, but I want it to go to my web page. Um, and then you can see I have the other um, articles that I added. Um, but again, so here's the one I just made. Um, but most importantly, um, I want it to go to this page. But when you when you first hit the website, you're going to go to this page right here. And so remember I mentioned at the very beginning that index.rmd is the home page or sort of like the first page on a distill site. And so whatever page you want the user to land on, so the landing page, 
it needs to be called index and you also need to add this site tag to the YAML. So I'm going to go to uh, my site that we made with the pretty colors and the template and everything and I'm going to add that site tag. And then I'm going to change the file name to index.rmd. So I'm going to delete the existing index file and I'm going to change the name of this one to index. I'm just doing a quick switcheroo so that this still knows that the landing page should be the really nice page that we made. And so now you can see my final file structure here um, for my final web page where I have my docs folder that's containing all the rendered HTML. I have my site configuration file. I have index.rmd, which is our really pretty page. I've got an image folder, I've got my theming, and then I have my two extra web pages or my two extra pages uh, that you can see in the navigation bar. Okay. Bria, can I oh, oh, go ahead. Sure. There's a question in the chat. In your file structure, where do you keep the RMD files? Um, or, so this is basically, so in the Our Ladies Build Websites project, um, they're just in that first layer. Um, so just if I go to that Our Ladies Build Websites folder, this is exactly what you would see. Um, you'd also see a couple other things for GitHub, but this is basically what you would see for the website. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any other questions? Okay. Um, okay. So we have the website that we want. Um, and so now let's push it online. So everything, I've got my switcheroo done. I've got all my pages done. So now let's get this thing deployed on the web so other people can see it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to push all our changes up to GitHub. So I've made my website. I'm saving things in our studio. You know, your Git pane populates. So we're going to push everything to GitHub and we're going to go back to our GitHub repo. So what we're doing is we're sitting in the GitHub repo. So on github.com. If you go to the settings of your GitHub repo and scroll long enough, you'll find something that says GitHub pages. And this is basically what's going to tell GitHub to take what's in my repo and post it online for a website. And so the source is going to tell it which branch to go to and the folder. And so it has a drop down menu. So I'm going to go to the main branch. I didn't add any branches to mine. So I think main was the only option. And then I want to go inside the docs folder because remember my output directory or what's containing all those rendered HTML files is that docs folder. So I'm telling, um, you know, GitHub to go inside docs and that's my website. Notice too, it's going to create a website name for me or URL for me. So the URL is going to be my username. So MA Tackett, that's my username for GitHub. And then remember that whatever the name of your repo is, that's what's going to go on the back half of the URL. So um, this is the new URL. Um, I think there are ways to customize it, but I haven't played around with those inside of uh, GH pages. But that's it. I just click this. Um, I you know tell it to go to main and docs. I'm going to click the save button. And now I've got a website. And so, um, so now if you click on this, I won't click on this for the sake of time so I can get to the tips here, um, but this is going to take you to that website that you see um, linked from uh, the notes document. So then just a few uh, sort of tips and things that I've uh, picked up along the way, um, and some of these we've kind of already covered, but um, one is start with the template or websites that you love. So again, in some of my class websites, I started with websites I really liked. Um, in this example, I use that postcards template. Um, also include these in acknowledgments on the website. So a lot of websites can have footers. So I have started adding footers where I just say, you know, this website was inspired by and put links to the other ones. Um, also in your GitHub repo, you can add acknowledgments. Um, also make small changes and preview the site often. So kind of that really iterative process where you change a couple things and then see what the updates look like. Um, and then one thing that um, I did for this talk that I don't typically do, but I really liked is to keep notes and a list of resources. Because a lot of these things with like any sort of coding or analysis work, right? Like, pat like patterns occur. Um, and so, one thing I'm really bad at that I hope to get better at is just like keeping documentation, right? Things like that weird button thing or like whatever, um, just so that next time you don't have to waste the time to uh, Google. Um, just a couple of other things. One is using the README of your GitHub repo for documentation. And I'll show you my GitHub repo. I can show you that in a minute. So whatever colors you use, 
Um, on the distill site, it's really easy to find the CSS file. Sometimes on blog down sites, it's a little clunkier to figure out where you change the colors. So I like to just keep, you know, my main site colors in my GitHub repo so I don't have to dig around for them. Um, that Hugo version, if you're using blog down, any sort of acknowledgments, resources, etc. Um, and then another thing is just to keep up with what's new. Um, as you may know, with R and R Studio, there's like people developing things all the time because um, there's just like really smart and creative people who use R Studio. Um, so R Studio's blog will post a lot of updates and information. Um, and then also the R stats uh, hashtag on Twitter. Again, there's just like a really um, vibrant and innovative R community on Twitter, um, even within like the last week. Um, Danielle Navarro on Twitter, she makes like really gorgeous like generative R art. Um, but anyhow, she's developed a new package for websites where you can make these nice cards for your website. And that happened like, I think it was like a week or two ago when she posted this. So there's always new things coming up. And so that's a staying engaged with the community is a nice way to keep up with what's going on. Um, there's a quick question. Oh, sure. Um, is, dis is Distill compatible with Netlify? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it is. So, um, yeah, and it's like a slightly different. Um, so you would need to set up your Netlify to read out of your GitHub repo. Um, but if I can remember the URL. Um, okay, maybe I won't. I was going to say I have. Oh, wait, maybe this is it. Here we go. I can show you really quickly. Uh, so here's a website that I made using distill and notice that we didn't do like we basically kept that same distill template. Um, also to the question about adding multiple tags here, you can also add menus um, underneath. You can also link to things that aren't um, just on the website, but anyhow, this is hosted through Netlify. Um, so yeah, so in the same way, you would just connect Netlify to your GitHub repo and it would work the same um, way. I think kind of related, someone else asked, how um, can you host the website in a commercial host like GoDaddy? Oh, um, that I'm not entirely sure. I don't use commercial hosts. So if anyone is familiar with those and would like to chime in, I will happily pass the baton. Someone answered, could use their URL redirect. Awesome, thank you. Um, Candace answered that. Um, and someone else was asking about whether Blogdown can be used with GitLab, um, or sorry, whether you can set Distill to work with GitLab rather than GitHub. Um, I think you should be able to, but again, I so I mostly use GitHub. Um, I'm not sure how you how to host websites out of GitLab, so I think that would be the only limitation. So as far as like you know, in our studio project and all that, that should all be the same. What I'm not sure about because um, I don't use. GitLab a ton is what their website deployment process would look like. Okay, great. Any other questions around those issues of deployment? All right, great. Thanks, Maria. Oh yeah, yeah, these are great. Um, and so just to show you what my website looks like, just again, to kind of wrap, put some context and just kind of wrap this up. So again, like I mentioned, using the README for documentation. So here I've just documented some colors. I've added some details so I can kind of remember where I got this from. Because remember, a lot of that code we were running in the console, so it's going to disappear. So I remember, okay, I'm using postcards. Um, I like to put links to the final website just because otherwise uh, I kind of forget what the links are. Um, and then to the slides. And then again, this docs folder has all the rendered HTML files. And so that's where our, or that's where GitHub is grabbing all the contents to make the web page um, that you see here. Um, great. So I'll stop there. I think the only other slide I had was just like my thank you slide. So I won't flip back. Um, but yes, I'm happy to take um, more questions. I hope that I can answer. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. This has this been fun. Thank you. That was amazing. Thanks. All right. Are there more questions for Maria? Um, okay, one person asked, do all the slash, does all the dot slash dot content need to be HTML? I saw that you had a PDF or other types in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. So in the docs file, 
Um, there's, um, yeah, so the HTML site, that's what's going to be your actual web pages. Um, so those will be um, HTML, I guess, unless you made other types of web pages, like a .php or something. Um, but nine times out of 10, your actual web page will be your .html files. Um, yes, you did notice when I built my website at some point later on, and I didn't show this in the presentation, but I added that our ladies, like the PDF to the slides in here. Um, I actually added it to, I can show you. So I actually added it in my R project. And so when I build the website, R is going to automatically push it to the docs folder. Um, and so, you know, when you go to the website and click the slides, um, now, you know, it just brings like a PDF reader. So you could put other things in there. Um, the HTMLs are going to be for the actual web pages. Um, there was a question, um, maybe I missed this in the talk, but how do you add links to videos or notes? Um, let's see here. So links as far as, so let's see here. Maybe I, I think I'll try to answer the question. So in your RM, in your, um, let me just go to index.rmd. So I'm just going to go to the file. So like, for instance, all those resources, you would just add those in your RMD file. Again, using I'm just using like markdown syntax. Um, so this is just in the body of that index.rmd. So like if you wanted to, you know, link to a video or something, you can do that. Um, you can also, like if you wanted to embed a video, there's R functions to do like iframe and stuff to, so, uh, you know, you could do that the same way you would with like a regular RMD file. Um, if I wanted to add a link to the navigation bar, like let's say I wanted to add a little, you know, link that takes you to like the Our Ladies Baltimore site, then in my site.yml, I would just add a line here that says Our Ladies Baltimore. And then instead of a relative link, I would put the URL for your website. Yeah, someone asked about um, your slides for today's presentation, and I think you said you use Keynote for them, right? I did. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I did. Yeah, I use Keynote. I usually make slides in Markdown, but when I want to do a ton of formatting, I do scoot over to Keynote. So yeah, they're Keynote slides. Um, someone asked about the drop-down menus for the tabs at the top. Oh, like how I would add those? Yeah, I guess you showed that example a minute ago, um, this one where you had the little drop down menus and the let's see here. So let me just show you what it looks like. So this one's like a little more clunky here. Um, so this is that website that had those make this a little bigger. So um, you basically kind of do some layering here. So this is getting started. That's what's going to show up in the navigation bar. And then I use this menu tag. So that's going to tell the still to make this drop down menu. And then these are all the things that show up in that drop down menu. Um, so it's just this extra here and then here to do the drop down menu. Um, I will note too that um, sometimes these things can be very picky about indentation. So mm -hmm. if the code looks right and it's not working, it may be something as annoying as like indenting two spaces versus three spaces or something. And there's an example where you're including links to something outside of the web page too, right? Oh. Yes, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so all these are going to external pages. So this would be if I wanted to link to something that's not within this actual web page. And so here I'm using the full um, URL. There was another question, I think that's similar to what you've just been covered to covering to if you have your personal website, can you link it to another website for a workshop you're teaching, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just like the same thing that you were answering before with adding a link in the RMD file. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, and even if you wanted to, so let me, hopefully I'm not being too confusing going back and forth here, um, but even like these buttons that we have, sorry, let me make this. Um, da -da -da -da. Right, so even like the buttons, it would be the exact same thing. I would just, you know, put the full URL. So here I'm linking to the GitHub repo for this page. So I could put like my personal web page here um, or in that configuration file, just put the whole URL to my personal web page. Great, thanks for all the questions, everybody. It's been really great having your participation. Are there other questions?
Um, there was a question about why did you in include an exclude line with XLS CSV? Oh, um, let's see here. Oh yeah, sorry. So this was on this page. Um, so basically what this exclude is gonna do is um, not push. So like in the, in the repo for this, there's a whole bunch of um, like extra RMD files and CSV files and things that you don't need for the website. And so when it generates the contents of the website and renders all that code to build the website, it's not going to include the CSV file and the Excel files and all that extra stuff. So if there's if there's content you don't want published to the web um, and it's not necessary for your website, you could include this exclude line. Include exclude. <laughs> all right, wonderful. All right, let's see. Um, do you have students that you teach at Duke learn how to build um, websites? You know, I don't, but I um, I get closer and closer to adding this. I see uh, you asked about for the project. I'm getting closer and closer to adding something like this to the project because I think, especially, like I said, one thing that's been really nice about being invited to do this talk is that I actually have thought about the process a little bit. And so thinking it through, it's actually, there's a systematic way, right? Where you could get a student to do this and you don't have to do all the switch and ruin thing that I did. Um, so I'm getting very close. <laughs> I'm feeling more confident that I could do it without derailing a class. But no, I haven't taught any of this content to students. I know it's always the best way to learn how to teach something is to have to teach it. <laughs> yes, yes, precisely, yes. Um, I will say too, for the caveat to that though, my classes, the students are using R Markdown from literally the first day of class, right? So they wouldn't, they wouldn't need to learn R Markdown. They would already have those skills. So it would just be the website piece. Lots of good props coming in in the comments. Yes, thank you all for the kind messages. All right. Any last things? All right, Stephanie, I guess you could go ahead and stop the recording and then we can hang out. Oh. Oh, I guess, yeah, or I don't know. Someone asked, um, why do you do our markdown in your class um, from day one? Oh, yeah. So I teach um, intro to data science and regression analysis, uh, which would be kind of like the second semester. And so one of the things we really focus on is like reproducibility and version control. And so our markdown is a natural tool for reproducibility. Um, the other thing too for the students is that by the end, they've got just like some really practical hands-on skills. Um, like we use GitHub as well. So a lot of students will like take their final project and, you know, um, usually clone it so they don't have all the teacher comments in there, but they have something they can share with employers and demonstrate that they have skills using these really modern tools. Um, so yeah, that's mostly it. Mostly uh, reproducibility um, is what motivates that. I will say too that I was highly motivated by Mina Chetankaya Rendell's intro to data science and data science in a box curriculum. been wonderful to hear um, this presentation, Maria. I've learned a lot myself. I have really, I have a very rudimentary website, so this will be good for me to think about expanding it myself too. And it sounds like lots of other people have really enjoyed it. Yeah, awesome. I've, thank you. I've used blog down, but I haven't used distill, so I'm really excited to try this. Um, thank you. Yes. I will, I will stop sh the recording, um, and then people can feel free to ask questions. If that sounds good.